insurance agents from around the world. Hey guys, this is Scott Howell with the Insurance Guys Podcast. Hey, let's talk about client experience for just a minute. Guys, we have got to start meeting our clients where they want to be met. Not where you want to be met. Guys, this isn't about you. This is about them. I know we would all love it to be about us, but it's about our clients. We got to start meeting them where they want to be met. I understand some of you want to want them to come into the office, drink coffee for 45 minutes, whatever. That's just not where we are today, guys. For those people that want that, that's fantastic. Every single year, more and more people want to jump on a mobile app. They want to download their ID cards. They want easy. They want speed. They don't want to come by and drink coffee with you. One of the easiest ways you can do this is through the agency-branded self-service platform, guys. And that is where Glovebox comes in. A carrier-connected agency-branded tool for your clients. Call today, get a demo with Glovebox, and mention the Insurance Guys podcast to get 20% off the life of your agency-branded CXP. Guys, let's go meet our clients where they want to be met. Easy speed. Have a great day. Hey guys, it's Bradley. Every now and then a company comes across my desk that not only blows my mind and what they're able to accomplish, but we implement that particular technology at Portal and it completely changes the way we do business. That's happened a few times with a few different companies and it happened this year with Ascend. In case you don't know, Ascend saves agents time by simplifying the time consuming process of collecting payments, premium finance, and paying the carriers without the back and forth paperwork, and it's integrated right into a slick checkout experience where customers can pay how they want, credit, debit, ACH, own the customer experience, guys. It's branded to your agency, and they offer a modern checkout experience that your customers want. Ascend will also, and this is a big one for me, automatically pay the provider, the carrier, the MGA for the payables, so it essentially turns agency bill into direct bill. Go to useascend.com backslash insurance, guys. The link should be below on this YouTube video. Check them out. Thanks. Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast powered by Glovebox. God, I love Glovebox. My name is Scott Howell, your fearless host and leader, insurance agency owner and insurance evangelist for I Protect Insurance and Financial Services based out of Huntsville, Alabama. And before we get started on today's episode, please help me welcome. He is a six foot three sophomore from Mobile, Alabama. Parade first team All American rivals, five star recruit. He is a fantastic insurance agent and a great American. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome my brother from another mother, Mr. Bradley Flowers. How are you, Bradley? Great, Scott. How are you today? Best I have ever been. Bradley, I got big news to tell you. I've waited until right now to tell you. Okay. Because I just feel like right now in my heart, it's the right thing to say to you. You're retiring? Uh-uh. Oh. I'm staying here in Mobile tonight. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Now, I realize you got kids at home and a wife yeah. and lots of things to do, but uh, we had a couple of uh, a meeting late yesterday afternoon where we had some things that we kind of needed to type some yeah. more sense today, and I yeah. thought... Yeah. I'm too old to try to drive six hours at four or five o'clock this yeah. evening. So I'm just going to stay here tonight and get up in the morning. And we go. are this far from the insurance guy's plane. So once we get there, we can, can't wait. We can just jet you up there, you know. I can't it's wait. Eight I'm, minute flight. So, so guys, we have got a very special show for you today. I have got somebody that Bradley and I have. How, how did we meet him? Was it uh, all be night? That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we interviewed Albie yesterday, and he said, "Am I before or after Bob?" I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something, Albie. Not if you're listening to this, I'm gonna say it again. Whenever you're ready to eat elk sliders at that restaurant in, <laughs> in Austin, Texas, you just pick me up in the truck, and I'm gonna be like that Labrador Retriever. I'm just gonna jump up in the truck, and, and we're gonna go. Albie, Albie is a guy that knows things. He's gonna know where the best restaurant is. He's sure. gonna know it, it. He he's he's a guy that knows things. That's just the best way to describe him. He is very knowledgeable in the insurance. And, and if you're traveling to a city somewhere in the country, there's a chance he probably has a house there. Oh, 100%. and you can stay there. Like he's just he just he's just one. He's like a guy's guy. You know. I'm telling you, guys. We have a very special guest on the show today. 
our mission on this podcast never changes. It never changes. Our mission is to help you agents grow, become successful. I always tell people, if you can just take one small nugget from this podcast and go back to your agency and implement that, and if it turns your agency, you know, Mike Stromso always says, big door swing on little hinges. And it may be that one thing that you take back and implement into your agency that moving forward 20 years from now, you can show up at Scott's house and give me my million dollar check and mm -hmm. say, Scott Howell, I want to tell you something. If it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't be the success that you, that I am today. And so here's your check for a million dollars that I owe you. That's your retirement plan. That is my retirement plan. I've talked about that on the podcast before I'm going to be on my tractor one day and this limousine is going to pull up at my house and I'm going to be bush hogging and I'm going to think, well, why is there a limousine at my house? out at Pine Ridge uh, Road, uh, population 79 people. And I'm going to be bush hogging, and I'm going to go over there, and I'm going to get off my tractor, and they're going to hand me a check for a million dollars and hug my neck, and they're going to say, Scott, had it not been for you, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I can't wait for that day. When, it's going to happen. When somebody has a baby in Pine Ridge, do y'all, like, over-celebrate because the population just went up by, like, 10%? No, no, we don't. We probably should. Yeah, I mean um, – more another taxpayer. You know? I, I, I will tell you in all honesty, and this and this is the God's honest truth. We do celebrate when one of the crackheads gets put in jail. Okay, all right. Uh, the population goes down. Correct. Yeah. Uh, one of the bicycle boys, which is about a quarter of them. If any of y'all don't know, because a lot of y'all live in like urban and suburban areas, when you have people who use heroin and crystal meth living around you. Typically, it's fairly obvious because they'll have about a 1978 Cavalier trailer, and uh, outside that trailer, it just looks it looks like a bomb went off. Like, there's, there's stuff just everywhere. Yeah. And so, about uh, three months ago, one of the bicycle boys, which is uh, one of our uh, drug people that live around us, he went to Morgan County Jail. That was a celebration of sorts. Mm -hmm. Uh, crackhead Christy has been out of our picture for a while and I don't know where she is, Bradley. She may, she okay. may not be with us on okay. earth anymore. I don't know, but, um, yeah, we got a lot going on out at Pine Ridge. Y'all should come up and visit sometime. Uh, guys, we have got a very special episode of the insurance guys podcast today. It is very rare that I get to interview and Bradley gets to interview a legend in our industry. Today is one of those days. I only have about 650 questions for him today. So I'm very much looking forward to our time together here for the next 45 minutes. And I want to give him the introduction that he has always deserved. He was born in New Jersey and grew up in upstate New York. He currently resides and splits his time between Fairfax County, Virginia and Delray, Delray Beach, Florida. He is married to the beautiful Barbara, and they have three grown children, Shannon, Robbie, and Ryan. And to, I want to say this to Shannon, Robbie, and Ryan. I don't know you guys, but I hope that your dad will let you listen to this podcast because you guys should be very, very proud of what your father has done in this industry, the role he has played. And I hope that you go hug his neck and tell him how much you love him after you get a chance to listen to this because um, he has left a legacy and a resume of success in his time in the insurance industry. You should be very proud of that. He is a graduate of the King's College and American University, and he is – Currently, and I don't know for how much longer, maybe we can talk about that on the podcast today. He is currently the president and CEO of the Big Eye. He has also been named one of the top 100 most influential people in the insurance industry. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my profound honor today to introduce to you Mr. Bob Rustbolt. How are you, Bob? <laughs> I am great, Scott. That is probably the best introduction I've ever had in my life or I ever will have. And um, 
Let me just say that it's an honor to be with you two guys. You truly are the cult leaders of the insurance industry, and I'm a groupie. So um, <laughs> I am uh, super pleased to be with you guys today. But for, for a nominal fee, Scott will follow you around and, and say that as you walk into rooms. So yeah, he could be the voice of God. There you me. go. Hey, hey, Bob, I've got to start with a start. And I've got so many questions for you. So many things I want to talk about today, but there is something in your biography that I have got to ask you about, because I think a lot of insurance agents would be interested in this. You have had the opportunity that not many people in the United States of America have ever had to have met both, well, uh, four different presidents. You've met Reagan, you met Bush 41, you met Bush 43, and you've met Clinton and gotten the chance, you know, in the Oval Office to spend a little bit of time with them. Which one of those presidents left a... I guess a mark on you or, 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 or maybe your time with them just from a story standpoint, really, did you enjoy meeting the most? Well, Ronald Reagan is one of my all time heroes. So yeah. as far as the, the defining person in my modern history, it would be Ronald Reagan. He sure. fundamentally changed the world, not just our country. Correct. Uh, I love the man. I miss him. Um, I was fortunate enough to, when I was a congressional staffer, pretty big eye, to have a bill passed through Congress and signed into law by President Reagan. And I got a pen from President Reagan wow. on the bill that I worked on that he handed to me in the White House. And that was one of the best moments I ever had in my political uh, professional life. I will tell you, though, that uh, uh, George W. Bush, I had him speak at our legislative conference. And I had my whole family there mm -hmm. and uh, I'm introducing him. He was supposed to stay in the green room, but he walked up on stage in front of a couple thousand agents while I'm introducing him. And as they're playing hail to the chief, he's standing next to me and he leans over to me and he goes, that's one of the best introductions I've ever had. And I said to him, Mr. President, you say that to everybody. This is a private conversation on, right. the, on the podium. He leans back to me, he goes, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, that's just the way he was. He goes, no, I don't say that to everybody. Right, right, right. Um, so, and then I, I introduced him to my daughter, uh, who is a six foot uh, model. I said, would you like to kiss my baby? He said, absolutely. He gave her a hug and a kiss. That's awesome. And my son would have fit in well with you guys. He was a college football player uh -huh. and he wanted to know all about his football career. And uh W was super engaging and a great guy. And his father was just a diplomat and a statesman. Right. Um, and Bill Clinton is a guy you want to hang out and play cards with. Right, right. <laughs> um, Bill Clinton was actually, you know, he's a good old boy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was on the golf course behind him and talked to him. I was in the White House Oval Office with him. Um, and uh, he was a great politician, even with all his blemishes and problems. Correct. I saw a, a video of Clinton the other day and he said that someone asked him when you left the white house, what was, was there like a moment when you knew that you were not president anymore, where mm. it sunk in. And he said, yeah, when the music stops playing, when you walk into rooms, right. right. <laughs> he yeah. said, that's yeah. the, you're, yeah. you're, you get so used to that for eight years. Right. I've yeah. heard them also all say this, that another time when you realize you're no longer the president of the United States is when you leave the Oval Office and you're not getting on Air Force One, you're mm -hmm. getting on just a commercial public, airplane. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of a, a different thing. What's, too. what's the conversation like? So, so I assume a lot of these, a lot of these folks, you know, some of these presidents you're talking to championing for independent agents What's what's the what's their perspective of our industry and, and what are some of those conversations that you guys had that you can share? Yeah, well, when I was with Bill Clinton as president it was after the uh, Kennedy Kassebaum bill was passed, which was about the portability of health insurance. Mm -hmm. And this is pre Obamacare. So independent agents used to do a lot of individual health policies as well as, of course, we still do a lot of group, as you know. Right. But. Most agents are out of the individual field because it's been taken over by the government. But at that time, portability was an important issue. We were the only insurance group in the insurance industry to come out and endorse the Kennedy-Kassebaum bill. 
So we were personally invited to the White House by President Clinton, and uh, we had a long talk about insurance, health insurance issues vis-a-vis -vis independent agents. It was quite fascinating. But I spent a lot, I was uh, a campaign advisor to George W. Bush and uh, spent some time talking about small business and insurance uh, issues with him, uh, tax issues for pass-through uh, subchapter S entities, which two thirds of big eye members are pay at the individual rate um, and a whole host of regulatory issues. I met with President Bush 43 after 9-11, was called to the White House with a whole bunch of insurance company CEOs like Hank Greenberg with AIG, Dean O'Hare with Chubb, et cetera, uh, Romney Air with the Hartford Insurance Company. And um, we met there and it was about invoking the war exclusion provision in insurance policies. The whole industry said we were not gonna do that. And uh, that was a profound meeting we had uh, just a couple of weeks after 9-11, we were attacked by the terrorists and uh, the president of the United States, the commander in chief, was asking us insurance questions uh, that had a, a profound impact on our economy. Mm. What's that conversation like, specifically the 9-11 one? Is that, a, is that a tense conversation? No, it wasn't tense. There was about, if my recollection is correct, about 10 of us. We met in the Rose, Roosevelt Room just right next to the Oval Office in the West Wing of the White House. The 10 CEOs, we sat around a table uh, and the president asked each of us individually in about three or four minutes, our assessment of the insurance industry, if we could pay claims, whether the war exclusion provision would be invoked, um, what all this meant for the economy from our perspective. Um, and then he gave his, his uh, perspective. He had a couple top advisors there. The treasury secretary was there um, and it was a, somber, serious, important conversation for our industry and for the country. You, you've got to feel like 10 feet tall when you leave that. You know, not so much 10 feet tall. I felt more humbled in a way that I was even asked to come to the White House and give the perspective on behalf of independent agents and brokers um, in our industry. And uh, at that time, if you, if you go back at that time and point in history, just a couple of weeks after 9-11, there was still confusion and chaos in this country. Um, if further attacks were coming, we didn't know what was going on with our air traffic control system and security, et cetera. And um, it wasn't as much, it's, it's a good observation, right? It wasn't 10 feet tall. It was more one of um, what can I do to help our industry and our country? Yeah. And I mean, more from the perspective of, hey, this is a really important conversation that is affecting the country, right? Our decisions and the things we're talking about, it's, right. it's got to feel, uh, I don't want to say inspiring, but very important. Yes, abs absolutely. Important is even an understatement. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Bob, you have had an illustrious career. And we just sat here and talked about few a few of the important meetings that you have been a part of uh, and I know I'm painting with a little bit of a big brush here in your opinion um where we are today as the independent insurance industry channel what has changed the most in your opinion over the last 20 to 30 years in in our industry what you know, from the say the eighties up till to today and where we sit today, what what's changed the most? Well, it's it's technology that has really changed uh, the 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 modus operandi of independent agents in our industry, uh, the interaction between carriers and agents, uh, the interaction between agents and consumers. Um, you know, when I first started in the industry. Um, you know, fax machines were the primary way to communicate. Uh, we were using Wang processors, word processors, and right. uh, computers were at their infancy. Um, you know, people, when computers first came into being, everybody kept talking about Sensi and how we were going to, you know, interact with multiple carriers um, and how to get more efficiencies. And so if you look back 30 years, I've been with the big eye for 37 years. Right. So if you look 37 years ago and where we are today, it's about like talking about, you know, going from, um, 
you know, navigating the sea with Magellan to being on a modern cruise liner. Sure. Um, it's night and day. I mean, and, going back five years is almost yeah. night and day. You can imagine 37. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Brad, Bradley and I had the honor and privilege of getting to tour Rough Notes magazine. And as part of that, we, you know, sat down and, and they gave a presentation about the history of the independent insurance agent. And we got to see some of what you're talking about right now, relative yeah. to, you know, how things were then versus, you know, you know, we already know how they are now. So, well, it's funny when we're there, they're going through their, their management system that they yeah. used to sell, which was the wooden filing cabinet. Right. Yeah, and right. and the, they, they, they structured it such that the drawers only fit their applications. Right. And someone asked jokingly and said, Oh, does this integrate with, xyz tool and i said well it integrates with thompson's water seal that's about it <laughs> right right yeah what? no it's it's incredible i mean the big eye we just celebrated last year our 125th anniversary we were formed in 1896 mm -hmm. but a lot of the big eye local chapters started in the early 1800s mm -hmm. uh the first one was in cincinnati uh, around uh, around 1830 or so and if you think about that i mean our country was formed in uh, Declaration of Independence, 1776, 1789, uh, 1830s. We were right there at the beginning yeah. of this country. Right. Well, it's, it's interesting, too. I, and it, I, I thought of this earlier when we were talking about the president. So I think it was Benjamin Franklin that had a quote, and I'm paraphrasing here, that when the United States government falls, the next industry to fall will be the insurance industry. In other words, the insurance industry will be the last thing to fall. Right. And I think when you take that, which I 1000% believe is true, combined with the fact that independent agents are small business owners, mm -hmm. we're independent, right? We are the epitome of small business in the United States right. and an industry that is somewhat indestructible. That's got to be somewhat appealing to a president or a presidential candidate of like, Hey, I have to get through to this group and support. No, totally. This group. Uh, you know, we're in every congressional district. We have a national legislative conference every year in Washington, DC this year it will be in late April. And, um, you know, there's 435 members of Congress. Uh, there's a hundred senators and there's independent agents in every single district. And, uh, we have independent agents that are members of Congress uh, we have independent agents that are United States senators, um, governors, insurance commissioners. Um, we are everywhere. And our grassroots is really what gives us the power uh, with legislators and regulators. And the advocacy, I always say independent agents are great educators, not just of their clients, which we know they are, but with those decision makers that can control the future of this independent agency system in our industry. So um, we educate every day. So right now, today, uh, as we sit here, the insurance industry, we're in a hard market. We continue to have, it seems like one natural disaster after another that just kind of, I don't know, uh, you know, causes more payouts of claims and things that have to be looked at. Where, where do you stand in terms of your overall mentality of, I guess, thinking about, you know, we're in a hard market. We've got carriers that are low capacity in Florida. We, it seems like every year we have some major national natural disaster. What, what are your thoughts on that and, and kind of where we stand today with, I guess carriers and current and, state of the market. Yeah. Current state of the, the industry right now, yeah. as it relates to that, I'm yeah, sorry, a, I'm having a hard time getting my words out. No, no, that's a good, well, you had to interview Aubie before me. So I know that, <laughs> that was, a, that was understandable. I know, you know, you just yeah. look into that bow tie, Bob, and it's yeah. like, it's like you get hypnotized. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, you know, I'm old enough to remember the major hard market we had in the late 80s, early 90s called the availability affordability crisis, mm -hmm. where basic homeowners, if you had a swimming pool with a diving board in the backyard, you couldn't even get insurance because the diving boards were considered such a, 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 a risk. Mm -hmm. People were ripping out stuff from their swimming pools and et cetera. So 
Um, that led to the risk retention acts where um, there was less regulation for liability insurance, et cetera. This hard market is not nearly as challenging as the hard market of the late, eight, late 80s, early 90s. But depending on your geographical location, I'm here in Florida right now, um, or if you're in Louisiana or California or Colorado with wildfires or Tornado Alley, um, there is a major property problem right now facing consumers and independent agents and brokers and the industry in general. I just toured the southwest coast of Florida with the chairman of the Big Eye, John Costello, uh, some weeks ago. We did a video. We handed out a, a bunch of money from our Trusted Choice Disaster Relief Fund to Big Eye members and their families that had their homes wiped out, their businesses wiped out. Um, some very sad but compelling stories and powerful stories of how independent agents were serving their clients when their house was wiped out. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what we do. We help people in their greatest time of need and our association helps our members in their greatest time of need as well. But um, the property markets are a little different in every state. Here in Florida, uh, you have a reinsurance issue. I think after 2023, when we head into 2024, that reinsurance capacity issue is going to be huge, especially for a lot of domestics and takeout companies here. Mm -hmm. um, you have a litigation explosion in certain states. It's a problem here in, in Florida. The trial attorneys here are very strong. Uh, you have a problem in Florida here with contractors and roofers uh, that are a little unscrupulous sometimes and taking advantage of consumers and insurance companies mm -hmm. uh, and so on. So uh, in Louisiana, you know, that that market is almost completely dysfunctional when it right. comes to property. Uh, and then the wildfire, even in a state like Colorado right now, you're seeing a major property dislocation and disruption uh, from high end to, to middle to low end homes uh, where carriers just don't want to write. So something has to give at some point in time. Uh, the great thing about independent agents vis-a-vis -vis State Farm is at least we have some options we can go to and we have excess and surplus lines for mm -hmm. certain types of business, et cetera. But even that is getting hard to do. I've had Florida agents tell me point blank that they have had to let clients go because they could not place their property insurance. Right. So I, I, they say I've run out of options. I don't have anything for you. That's yeah, I, I've had I, I've had two agents in the past two days reach out to me in other states who have clients purchasing a property in Florida asking me who who they can reach out to as an agent in the Florida market to help assist their client with securing insurance. Right. That's right. happened twice in two days. Yeah. No, it's, it's really, really hard. Now, Florida just passed major legislation, was signed into law by Governor DeSantis. It's going to help, but it's going to take time as well. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, these things just don't turn around on a dime. And that was my point. I, I did a video on my YouTube when that came out and did a reaction video to it. And, and my overall message was positive with the caveat of, hey, are we as consumers we being residents of Florida as consumers going to be patient enough to mm -hmm. wait on this to play out because nothing in insurance happens overnight. It takes yeah. a few years for anything you to see the positive effects of anything. And are the politicians going to be patient enough right. to not run on the platform because they have to get reelected in four years of, Hey, I'm against this property reform because it didn't work. Well, it takes, a few years for it to work. Correct. Right. And undo the whole thing. That's my, my overall concern with that. But yeah, I mean, the attorney problem in Florida, the assignment of benefit problem is the, the, the roofing problem. It's, it's, it's all contributing to this. And the problem is in the marketing world is the, the insurance company is made out to be the big, bad insurance company. Right. Which right. is not really the case. I mean, certainly there's insurance companies that do things that we all don't like, but, but when you look at the overall litigation in Florida, com uh, the percentage of litigation in Florida compared to the United States, and also compare that to the percentage of claims, it's like this, mm -hmm. right? It's they have what they have what eighty percent of the the property litigation in the country, and only eight percent of the claims, or something like that, right? Well, think about the you know the tower that collapsed in Miami 
Um, and the jury award was over $1 billion. Right. I mean, how much premium did they collect on that tower? A fraction of that, a right. fraction. Right. Uh, so shifting gears here, where we are as an industry today, I mean, th there, this sounds doom and gloom, but there's a lot of positive things. Independent agents, I think, are, are, are well situated to really take advantage of the next few years, right? Like you mentioned, Bob, having multiple options and that sort of thing. Uh, but at the same time, we can't sit here with our fingers in our ears and ignore all the changes that are happening, not only in our industry, but in the world. What do you think, as someone who sees all this at a very high level, what do we need to do as independent agents to keep our agencies moving forward? Mm, great question. Well, the two challenges that I hear in all our surveys show uh, are the biggest challenges for independent agents are talent and technology, the two Ts. Every single survey, everything we do with independent agents, those come back as the two biggest challenges. Now, from that, you can get into a whole host of other issues um, from talent and technology, obviously, <clears throat> but those are the two. And even with medium-sized agencies, you know, they're saying, you know, I need like two new CSRs right. and I can't find anybody. Um, and then you get into the larger agencies, they wake up every morning and they're trying to hire people all day long. That's what they do. Uh, and then technology for the smaller agencies is just overwhelming. Where the principal, you might have five people in the agency and he has to be an expert on personnel issues, technology issues, obviously insurance issues, uh, you know, marketing issues, advertising, you go right down the list and the guy, you know, those principles are one armed paper hangers. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a fire hose to the mouth when you're, you're talking technology to them. So the two T's are in general, the biggest challenges. Um, but there are also opportunities. Technology can empower smaller agencies. How many small agencies have you seen now? They're selling across state lines. They have a handful of employees and, you know, their revenue way outstrips the size of the agency, what we've known historically for revenue per employee. So um, those agencies that will take a chance and invest in technology and the right people uh, can be much bigger than they really are in this day and age. And I hate to say this because we're state regulated. We're the largest industry in the United States that is solely state regulated. Hmm. Having said that, state boundaries are becoming less and less important every day. You guys yep. see it. Every agent knows it. Uh, almost every agent, I don't care what size agency you are, has clients in other states now. You have to have licenses in, in multiple states to really service your clients I mean, if you're in Alabama, you might have a home in Destin, you know, that right. you've got to, you got to be, you got to be licensed and have a non-resident license in Florida to, to write people and business owners. So um, those are the two biggest challenges, I think, in general that we, we see. And I, I think with consumers too, the, the location of your agency matters a lot less, mm -hmm. especially with the more preferred customers that aren't going to necessarily come into the office and pay cash every month. Right. I, I realized this when I was captive because we, we hit it big for a few years running online ads and, and we would write people from, from Huntsville to Mobile, which is six hours apart. Right. And they not once asked, okay, now where's your office located at? Right. So I think agents need to be looking. I mean, certainly you need to <clears throat> If it's, if it's your thing, you need to try and dominate the community that you're in, but at the same time, be looking outside as well. And I think too, Bob, I agree hundred percent talent technology. I think COVID helped us in those two areas. I think it helped us in the technology sphere mm -hmm. because agents who did not want to innovate were forced to innovate, mm -hmm. right? You're not using things like e-signature. You don't have the the technology and the equipment for you people to work from home, all of a sudden they have to, you've got to implement those things. And hopefully most people realized, Oh, this isn't so bad. Right. And then two, well, you remember I kept saying the insurance industry is built for COVID. Yeah. 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 I kept saying that on podcast and that's exactly what I meant. As long as you weren't the guy that, you know, didn't have the technology set up. Mm -hmm. If you, if you were ready for it, Right. We, we were built for COVID. Well, and then, and then two, it helped us from a talent standpoint 
because the insurance industry had always had this kind of this kind of underbelly of oh you've got to have a storefront right, right. and we have a storefront like I, I i do think a physical office does give you an advantage and and i actually made a piece of content on youtube when covid first happened and i said what's going to happen with COVID with all these people working from home is a lot of these insurance carriers and carrier reps that require you to have an, a physical office mm -hmm. are going to realize, Oh, wait a minute. Not only can you sell insurance, not having to have an office, but you can actually do it a lot better in some cases. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think it helped us from that standpoint, because now I'm running employment ads in Colorado. I'm running employment ads in Missouri. We can pull talent from other areas and we don't have to just rely on the community that we live in, which let's face it. If you live in a small community, like I do, eventually you're going to run through all the town. Yeah. Your pond becomes an ocean. So I think, I think COVID has helped us in those two areas. No, I agree. And we have something called big eye hires, which helps uh, members uh, find the talent they need nationwide. And, you know, we have members that are located in South Carolina and North Carolina that are using CSRs in upstate New York. Right. Yeah. And they, they're, they're employees of the agency in, in North Carolina. Uh, and I think especially, Bob, if you're in an area like a California or the Northeast, where your cost of living is so much higher, right? looking and, and I'm saying this, this is detrimental to me, but looking at areas in, that the cost of living is a lot lower, mm -hmm. you can you can pay people more from their perspective but it's less for you than what you would pay somebody down the street from your office. Well, I mean, you know what I mean? Well, I, I don't know. If you're in California I, and you hire somebody in Alabama, you can pay them way more than what they would get in Alabama, but it's still less for you. Well, you know? Bradley knows this, Bob. Uh, two of my best CSR account managers that I have uh, are, are overseas. Yeah. They, they, they're, they're in another country. Um, right. That's yeah. just how it shook out. They yeah. both do a fantastic job for us. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I like to hire local people if I'm able to, but um, it, it indispensable to our agency and both don't require a lot of the things, benefits and other things that I would have to have if I hired someone local. Now, there are some advantages to hiring someone local. I get that. Um, well, my angle is too. you know, I, I have an office, but only because I want to have an office. Correct. Right. And, and if I could choose, I would rather have all my people here. But if, if they're more comfortable and productive working from home, by all means, yeah. what like the only lens we, we should judge people through as far as doing their job is do you do your job well? And are you a good person? That's it. Like, are you doing, are you doing the job? Well, I'll tell you this. And I think Bob would agree. You get somebody like Kaylin Weston, my 16 year commercial account manager who works from home. Kaylin Weston's good enough. She ain't got to come in the office. Yeah. You know, if you're Tom Brady playing quarterback, right. You might not have to go to the team meeting. Everybody else has to go right. to Right. Right. If you're that good right. and, and she's that good. And so, I mean, that's Bob, just how I think about that. Bob, what, you know, you, you mentioned, uh, I think, I, don't, I can't remember if we said it yet on the air. You're, you're retiring September 1st, 37, Boom. 37 year career. Big news guys. What's, What's your, uh, and you're still going to be very involved. You're, you're on a lot of boards. Don't, don't tell my wife yet. She doesn't know. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Ms. <laughs> Rustbolt. Well, hey, well, the part of this story that I didn't want to bring out on the podcast, and Bradley, unfortunately, has Dropped opened up Pandora's box. Bob is actually coming on as an advisor for I Protect Insurance. Uh, okay. Okay. And right. uh, <laughs> we look forward to having you. It's going to be fantastic. You. Hey. I'm, I'm, gonna be an I'm gonna be an independent contractor. I'm a there free agent. You, there you go. What what what's your if you and, and I and like I said, I know you're gonna be you're still gonna be very involved. What's the message you want to leave to the agents that are mm, listening today? What's your what's question. your parting message? Well, I've seen it all, um, as many of our members and independent agents have throughout history. I know the history of the independent agency system well. And I think I know the future uh, when it comes to our, our system. And I got to tell you what, you know, we have Conning and Company and others that have predicted the demise and uh, elimination of the independent agency system, calling us buggy whip manufacturers and milkmen and candlestick makers and every other derogatory out of date term. All untrue. Many of those were said 30 years ago. Um, <laughs> 
when the big guy won the Yonkers case in the early 1900s that gave the ownership of expirations to independent agents, which makes us unique in the world. Every country has brokers that represents multiple markets. Mm. We are one of the only systems in the world where we own our own book of business. You say you're going to roll your book to, to a Japanese agent. They don't even know what the heck you're talking about. Right. How, do you, how do you roll a book of business? Why, how can you do that? You, get, you, you go to jail for that because um, they don't own their book of business. So the bottom line is I am so optimistic about the future of the independent agency system. And not just because we're in a hard market, not just because revenue is going up in most agencies. It's because this is still fundamentally a complex product that we are selling and we are trusted advisors to consumers. I don't care that some people think that personal lines has been commoditized. I personally believe that most people still never read their policies and have no clue what's in it. And if you wanna to go to a direct writer and then you have a claim and you don't have anybody there walking you through the process as a trusted advisor, it's a world of difference. Yeah. It's it's a commodity until it's not. Correct. So you are speaking my love language right now. This is all I talk about. Keep going. A trusted advisor, you know what, is worth it. And you know what? Geico charges more than a lot of independent agency carriers. Uh, and people don't understand that. And um Hey Bob, I yeah. this is a true story. I've been in I've been an in, independent and captive insurance agent for 15 years. I have never lost not one time in 15 years have I lost to Geico. Not one time. Yeah, I believe. And, it. But but they spend 2 billion dollars a year right now on advertising to yeah. brainwash the American people. Right. And every time I go up against Geico, I always hear the same thing. I'll let you quote my insurance, but there's no way you can beat Geico because I've been brainwashed for 20 years right. with their commercials. And then every time after we, you know, tell them that, you know, we can provide better coverage for a lower price, they are just shocked. They're right. like, I don't understand how, you mm -hmm. know, right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to steal Bob, your thunder. Bob, tell yeah. the, tell the story that you told me about when you spoke to the group of all state agents. Ooh. Yeah. I, uh, I was asked many years ago to speak to the all state executives, uh, in Chicago at the McDonald center when Ed Liddy was the CEO uh, of all state. And I went there, this is, uh, geez, I 25 years ago, maybe. And, um, I told him that, uh, only two distribution channels were going to survive and thrive in the insurance industry is going to be the independent agency system and direct mm. and that the, the days of the captive uh, agent were limited and numbered and they were not going to be able to survive. And I gave all the reasons why. And after my speech, uh, Ed Liddy, the CEO came in and he said, Bob, that was really interesting. You do know where you are, right? <laughs> I said, I said, yeah, that's why I gave it here. I right. went into the lion's den and I spoke what I thought was the truth. And now it has become a fact. It's reality. Nationwide has gotten rid of all their captives. They're an independent. Liberty has gone in that direction. You go right. All, even all state themselves have like 25% of their distribution forces independent. Yeah, we have an all state right down the line. And the only last man standing really is State Farm. Right. They're really the last man standing that are totally exclusive agents. And they're even they're even dipping their toe in the water yeah. a little bit. They have a an ENS market that they own. And then they're also doing uh they bought Gaines Co. Mm -hmm. And then uh they have a deal with Haggerty. So they they're even right. dipping their toe a little bit they just are. to kind of test the water so, out. So I, I do think I think in 20 years we will see, and maybe even less than 20 years, most most everything is some sort of gray area of independent, yeah. if not fully independent. That, that, that's exactly what I was about to ask Bob. Do you believe Bob? And then I hate to put you on the spot, but in the next 10 to 15 years, and I think for a few of the companies you just mentioned, maybe a lot sooner than that, based on some, some rumors that I hear, uh, that you will just see the dis disenfranchised or disillusionment of those particular carriers in the way that you see them now meaning yeah. maybe yeah. maybe we're down to 
just State Farm, or maybe there's not a captive and, carrier. And, 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 and to a degree, I mean, being the last man holding out is an interesting it is. value pro- pa- paradigm. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Well, I t- I, here's an interesting little um, example and story. So when I was in Southwest Florida, I was with a agent right on the coast. He had like six feet of water in his agency, independent agency, probably 10, 12 employees or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, we helped him out. And literally in the same plaza in Fort Myers was I'm like three doors down was a state farm agency. So I'm walking in and talking to the principal. I go, wow, this is really close here. He goes, oh yeah, it's a one person shop. They they're basically don't write any property. That's my number one lead generation is state farm. She sends Correct. everything to me Correct. because she can't write it. Right. Exactly. So, you know, th- there are so many limitations on on captive agents when you can are beholden to one carrier. Bradley's right. State Farm is is experimenting. Um, in my opinion, and please, this is if anybody from all states listening to this, it's in my opinion, it's just a matter of time before all Agreed. state is sees the like like nationwide did. Right. Um, but there's no flexibility in the for the carrier with a captive agency model. It's an expensive model. Uh, the agents can't pass on their agency with, right. and perpetuate it in a family if they want to. That's up to the company. They, they can't do book rolls. There's so much more independence and freedom. And it's, mm-hmm. it's like puppies. Every time we convert a captive to an independent agent, it's like the dog's eyes are open as puppies. Right. Right. And they're going, wow, I have to buy e and Oh, wow. <laughs> right. I need this agency management system. Wow. Wow, look at all this contingency compensation I can get from these other carriers if I write X amount in volume. It's just a whole new world to them that they didn't even know as an agent. Right. Exactly. Well, it, it's interesting too. So I had a, a regional, we have we have an all state uh independent contract. And I had a regional vice president from all state in my office one day. This was when we got the contract. And and the person said, uh, we're, we're hundred percent, we're hundred percent committed to the independent agency force. Mm-hmm. And I said, can I guess why? And she said, sure. And I said, because if somebody goes to all state, you have some good agents out there, mm-hmm. but generally speaking, they're going to try to fit that customer in that all state box, mm-hmm. right? Which leads to poor retention because mm-hmm. it's not a good fit high loss ratios and just an overall poor customer experience and, and probably a, 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 a level of unprofitability for the carrier. Mm-hmm. If somebody comes to me and they fit perfectly with all state, we're going to put them with all state. If they fit perfectly, if they don't fit perfectly with all state, we're going to put them somewhere else. Right. Right. Which leads to higher retention, better customer experience, lower losses because right. it's the customer you want. Right. And she said, that's exactly right. Yeah. Bob, I've got one last question for you that has uh, interested me, and I think it would interest a lot of other agents as well. What is the day-to-day focus for the the CEO and the president of the Big Eye? What is your day-to-day focus and, I guess, attention, uh, you know, pointed towards every day? What What are you do? What What is your day-to-day look like? relative to that well when i finish watching and uh, listening to all of your podcasts there you go that's, that's, a, that's a good answer <laughs> um it's every day is a new experience which is why i love this job um right. because there is no repetition there's no one thing i do every single day um you know, as a national association leader, we have 51 state associations counting Washington, D.C. Right. Uh, we have international agents and brokers that are members of this association. We have an association in Japan, the Independent Agents and Brokers of Japan. Um, we have, counting the national and the state staff, we have about 500 full-time staff people in the big eye orbit at the state and the national. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a, a very significant for-profit operation, uh, MGA type operation, market access program. We own a reinsurance company, uh, which takes a, a big part of the big eye, E and O program with Swiss re, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've started a bank with uh, W.R. Berkeley, Bill Berkeley, and uh, we have an equity position. I serve on that bank board. Not very many associations own a bank. Um, and we own a technology company with six other carrier partners called TrustedChoice.com, which is a separate company uh, to drive business to independent agents and brokers. Um, using uh, SEO and a whole other uh, bunch of techniques to drive business and referrals and leads to uh, our members. So uh, we are a complex association. We have, of course, our government affairs and advocacy. We work with Bobby Reagan on the best practices, the Big Eye Best Practices Program. We have Invest, which is training the next generation of agents and brokers uh, at the high school and community college and four-year college level. And you just got, and I could name a hundred other things that we're working on as well. Um, but every day is different. And um, that's what keeps it interesting. I do a lot of advocacy with our carrier partners. Um, I talk to company CEOs and executives on a daily basis uh, mm -hmm. from large national companies to small regional companies and, and little domestic companies uh, advocating for our members. We have a a uh, lawyer that does all kinds of uh, uh, company agency appointment contract reviews to make sure our members are being protected in that venue. And uh, the list just is endless of what we do and what I oversee. So uh, it's, it's a daunting job, but it is satisfying. And I love every second of it representing independent agents and brokers. Yeah. I can imagine that, uh, your days are ever evolving and changing and different. And one day you're this, the next day you're in a meeting concerning that. Um, you've probably got a small uh, group of leadership that you are involved with on a day to day. We talked about that yesterday, a group of three to seven, maybe 10 people that you are in close contact with and probably trying to help grow them as leaders as they up, you know, become move up the chain of command in the, in the big eye sphere. Um, yeah. Yes. What, what, yeah. what, what are you, I know Bradley and I joked about, you know, September 1st rolling around, but are, are, what are you going to be doing after that time frame? Are you going to be in more of a, uh, a, a counseling role, uh, in the in industry after that? Well, I hope to play more golf. Uh, I understand. That's, I understand. that's one thing. Uh, but seriously, uh, I will be serving on a number of boards. Mm -hmm. uh, I will continue consulting uh, for the big I. Uh, I will continue on the insure bank board. I'll continue as chairman of the trustedchoice.com board. I'm mm -hmm. on the Accord board that Bill Peroni, uh, the CEO of Accord, um, is involved with. And uh, I will be on an insurance company board, but I can't tell you which one yet because it's all confidential. I'll protect um, insurance. Yeah, no, I think uh, carrier board, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I will yeah. I, I will be serving on, I will be working as a contractor, as a consultant for others, including mm -hmm. some other um, insurance entities. So I'm going to be quite busy, right. um, but I won't have a staff that I have to oversee. And sure. that's, 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 uh, part. that's going to be... Um, interesting and uh i think liberating in some ways yeah well, it, well i hope this goes without saying any anything that scott and i can do to to help in any fashion whether it's with the big eye or with any endeavors after the fact please don't hesitate to reach out no i appreciate that and and thank you for being big eye members um, absolutely you know you guys are just awesome you educate in an entertaining way and that is the best way to educate. I mean, we've all had teachers and professors that were as boring as the day is long. <laughs> right. And then we've had others that you still remember them the rest of your life because right. they made learning fun. Right. Yep. And that's right. what you guys do. Well, I appreciate that. Yes, thank you Scott. Very much. Scott is certainly the entertainment. Hey, hey, hey Bob, <laughs> I'm going to leave you with one piece of advice to, from a guy that's not retired but knows a lot of men and women that are. Just be real careful that you don't get busier in retirement <laughs> than you than you are now, because I've seen that happen before. So my wife called you before this, right? <laughs> yes. Because yeah. she keeps, she's looking at all these things I'm going to be doing. Right. She goes, 
okay, so <laughs> your day, every day is going to be completely filled like it was before, right? Right, yeah, right, 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 yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to shut this thing down, but we love you, and anything, as Bradley said, anything we can do, please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay? You guys are awesome, awesome. Well, thank, thank you for you. all you do. Guys, guys, as I end every episode, rewards come from action, not discussion. Uh, this man has left a legacy in our industry, and we're both uh, proud to have gotten to know him here at the end. And I just want to say again, thank you so much for coming on and sharing with uh, all the 250,000 agents listening to this right now. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Go out today, build relationships. This is still a relationship business and we can do all the TPS reports we want to, and we can look at all the scorecard bonuses, but you've got to go out into the big, bad world and build relationships. Go make money for your family, for your wife, for your husband, for your kid's college fund, for your parents and your in-laws that are struggling out there. Go make money for them, write good business for the agencies that you represent and write good business for the companies that you represent. Bradley Flowers, I love you. Thanks, man. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank thank you, guys. guys. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here. Guys, you were listening to the Insurance Guys podcast, and we love each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being a part of our family, and we'll see you back here real soon. Take care.